everybody, A. Lewis here. Welcome to Crafting Therapy 57. I'm so glad you're here. If you're new, pop on and say hi in the comments. Let me know where you're from, where you're watching from. I am here in Oklahoma and I am ready for fall. I hope that you probably are too. I don't know. Anyway, if you are part of my YouTube family, thanks for coming back today and we're going to have a fun time. If you remember, this is a Dollar Tree journal that we covered um, some time back. We covered the inside and the outside, but the pages are still the same. So we're going to do two specialty things to this one with these pages. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some waterfall pages that I'll show you how to do that. And then we're also going to design a really fun background for one of the pages using something that we'll just install into the page, um, gluing it on, but not decorating the page itself because these pages are a little bit thinner. And so it's better to decorate and then glue it on. So anyway, all right, crafting therapy. What is it? Crafting therapy is actually just a time to get inspired, re-energized, take a little time for yourself, be creative. I even have my new shirts. I love crafting therapy and they're in my my Teespring store. You can see the link below and uh, check it out if you're interested. There is a 25% off coupon going through October 25th. Anyway, easy to remember. Let's jump in. All right. So what we're going to do first is we're going to make the waterfall pages and I'm going to show you what I mean by that. And you can use scraps for that. So I cut these scraps to equal the size of the page. These are eight and three eighths for my book here. So you would measure the, the height of your page. And then I made these three quarters of an inch wide and I have five of them. So we're going to have five waterfall pages and you can decorate the page afterwards. But what I'm, what we do is we're going to cut down each page. So you just have to decide where in your journal you want the waterfall pages. To make a waterfall page, you're going to take your pages and you're going to trim them down um, gradually. So I need five pages. One, two, three, four, and five. So we're going to start here. So I'm just going to clip that. If you have one of those cool journal um, bookmarks, that's awesome. I did order one. I, I can't wait to get it. Okay. So just going to put my page here. Right, and this is a cutting tool, which I really don't need right now. So let's just take that out, but I just wanted to show you. So I'm gonna take one of my pieces that I've cut. Now I said these are three quarters uh, inch wide, and I'm just gonna glue it on. You can use washi. So I'm just gonna glue this on. Generous amount of glue because it's gonna be on the edge of the page, and you just glue it to the edge here. Now after uh, I apply these, then I'll go back and do the vintageizing, but I just want to show you how these go on. Again, you can use washi tape if you prefer. Okay, that's just as simple as that gets. Then I'm going to put my cutting mat here, and I am going to trim this three quarters of an inch. So what I want to do is mark where three quarters of an inch is. So I'm going to take my pencil and measure that three quarters of an inch from the edge because that's where I put my other one. And then I'm just going to take, make sure that I'm straight. Okay. And then just take a straight edge and trim this piece off. Now, depending on how wide your journal pages are would depend on how much you want to trim. So my inside page is not going to be very wide. Okay, so then I'm just going to take this one, glue it on, and so you can see how it's kind of waterfall. It's going to have that effect. All right, next one and trim three quarters of an inch again on this page. And I've already marked this one, so I'm just gonna go ahead and trim it down. 
and then I need to trim it another three quarters because that's just gonna give me to where the first one is. So then I need to trim it again three quarters. All right. And I just did that so that you would see and be able to measure um, how much you want to trim yours. All right, and then I'm gonna put this one and I'm probably only gonna do maybe one more just because of the width of these pages. You can see how the pages are falling into each other now. Isn't that cool? All right, we're gonna do at least one more. So I'm coming over, I'm coming over two and a quarter inches so that my cut will be right there where that edge is. So I've got my measurements on here and I'm getting my hands all inky. I don't know what I'm doing. I think it's my pencil had ink on it. All right, so now you can see we're taking more and more off. And this one is gonna meet right here. And we're gonna take the next piece of scrap that I've cut and put it right here. And you can see how your waterfall pages work and they fall right into each other. So it's a really cool, fun effect. And I'm just going to go ahead and um, ink those up a minute. Hi, the next thing that we're gonna do is take a file folder, cut it to the size of the page, and we're gonna decorate the page and have some fun with it, make it kind of artsy. The pages in my journal are eight and three eighths by five and a quarter. So I want to make my background page just a tiny bit smaller. So I'm gonna cut this to be eight. Let's see, I wanna try to get, let's do this width first. Let's do um, the width to be about five. And then the height is eight. Let's do let's do eight and a quarter and see how that fits. So I wanted to keep this tab on there. And I think that'll fit really nicely. Even if I want to pull it over like that. It's okay. All right, so that's what we're gonna use. This could be a pocket too. Okay. <laughs> um, yes, I digress. All right, so first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna ink, um, we're gonna glue and ink the edges. So I want to take this and I want to put some papers on it. And I have selected some of the scraps that I have and I'm just gonna choose what I want and then we're gonna put it all over here, sort of like, sort of like a master board, but not necessarily. So I'm just going to I'm just going to tear these and fit them onto my my page here. And that's nice like that, like that. And then we'll take um some brown. And I'm not making it necessarily a master board, but I just want to use some of the colors that are in here. So we're just going to Put some pages here on that, just, just like that. Now, once you have all your papers glued on, because we're gonna be covering all this up, I'm gonna go around the edges with this blue. This is polar blue. And I'm just gonna go around all the edges with the blue. So I wanna bring in that blue color just around the edges. like this all right and then if you want you could add some color into your whole background here we're gonna do some covering up of color though all right next I want to add a little of this green and this is pine tree green and I just want to add a little little green here and there just to add a little more color. So I like how that comes together. I'm gonna set that out of the way. 
The next thing that I wanna do is add some of the gesso for the background. And you've seen me do this before and you can do it with a paintbrush or with your finger. I think tonight I'm just gonna put a little on my finger and spread it around. So I'm just taking a tiny bit and I'm just gonna add it in here. Just a little, just to kind of get that kind of wispy, smoky ambiance look. And I'm probably gonna add a little more in a moment after we get some design in here. So I just like this kind of look and it adds um, to the effect. All right, I'm gonna add a little more up here. All right, so then there we are with that. Next, I'm just gonna start adding some, some of the decor pieces I have here. So I've set out some pieces that I like from the stickers and things that I have. I also have this circle and I really like it, but it's kind of big for this. So I'm gonna cut it with my two inch and this is a, a vellum that is from one of my paper packs. And so, so there is that circle. Now I'm going to cut that circle in half. Okay. And then we're going to glue, glue it half on this side and half on this side. So we're just going to add a little interest. So I'm just gonna put this here. And I may do another circle, but we'll see. I don't know if I need it. All right, so then we're gonna put this here, just like that, okay? Then I've got all these pieces. So you just have to decide what do you want to be in the front. So I do really like this um, lighthouse but I'm not real keen on the crab, the red crab, so I may cover up that crab, but I've put some blue on here. I do like the blue, but then I'm gonna add some of this vintage photo color to give it a little more aged look along with the blue and to mute that red. And if I still don't like it, I'll just take care of that grab but that's gonna look good I think and then I have this blue anchor since it's already blue I'm just gonna add some of this vintage photo color so you can see and then I have these other pieces here some of the ephemera needs a little extra but I don't know that the stickers necessarily do so then I have this big, nice sticker, and I'm gonna put this on first so it can be sort of in the background. And I may cut it yet. We'll see how, how it stretches across here. I don't know, I think it's gonna be okay. So we're just gonna put this on, and then I'm gonna go over it with this vintage photo ink because I like I like that all right then I've got this timepiece really like this and I'm gonna put that on here up here and you just start building and then I'm gonna take this world globe and we'll put this on and I think I'm going to cut off this stand. And we'll stick that there. And I have this ship's wheel. And I'm just taking my time with you guys just to kind of talk through um, the process. And then have this other little lighthouse here that I'm gonna glue on. And I want it sort of in the background of this other one. 
So we're gonna put that blue on there too. We're gonna glue this on. Okay. So this one is gonna be back here. And then when we put this one on, it's gonna be more to the front. Does that make sense? Okay. So we'll go ahead and put this one on now. Okay. Still not totally sure if I like that crab, but we'll see. Maybe I can cover it up. I'm gonna put this anchor over here. All right, and then I have this starfish and maybe that will go there. All right. Kind of take some of that red away because the red just to me is just too much. All right. Then I have this little ticket and we're going to stick it up here. And it comes over, so I'm going to cut that off. And go over that. Okay. And then I have another ticket. And you can see it just comes together and it looks so neat. And so then I'm going to take a little bit of gesso and go back over it and then come back over it with the, where do I want this? Let's cut it in half. And let's put this up here. And then let's put this one. Um, there we go. All right, let's go over this a little bit. All right, so you can see how it all kind of comes together. It looks really cool. I'm going to go over it again with some of the gesso, and then we're going to stamp uh, on it. So the gesso, I'm not going to put a whole lot more, just a little, just to kind of bring in this smokiness or, you know, into this the stickers and the ephemera that I've added because I don't want them to look out of place. I'm gonna glue that down. You can see how it becomes sort of an art piece and you're doing mixed media. So let's kind of cover up that little crab a little bit. That helps. All right, and then we need a little on this globe. There we go. There we go. That looks good. All right, next, and believe me, there's just one more thing we're going to do, is I have some fun stamps here that would be fun to stamp on here. I'm not going to stamp a lot, just a little, but I was trying to decide what is it that I really want. Um, I don't think the mermaids, but the fish are okay. And these are kind of big, but listen to the voice of the sea. I really do like, so I'm going to stamp that on there. And I'm going to stamp it with black. Okay, so I'm going to stamp just this one time on here. Listen to the voice of the sea. Oh, yeah, that looks good. And then I think I will do these little fish. And these fish are swimming. So that's pretty cool. Let's see. Let's put them down here. I feel like something needs to be there, but I don't know if I want guess we could do fish. I don't want to do a mermaid. So let's do it right here. There we go. All right, so let's let that dry a bit. And then if I need to add some more color, I will. 
right I think I want to add some more blue so I'm gonna go around all the edges again with the blue and I think that brings out that color a lot all right so that looks pretty good and then I want to bring some blue back in to the mix and then I'm going to add a little bit of the pine tree like I said this is a little bit longer um, just to talk through the process so I hope you've enjoyed this video and this process of creating these pages for a Dollar Tree junk journal. We did the waterfall pages, which are really fun. And then this page will glue in here. Now, one thing about these pages is you can just glue them straight in, or you could even make them a pocket. But let's just glue this one in right now. And I want to give it a good dose of glue. I'm just going to glue to this page here and make sure that it gets all the way where it needs to. And then I want to take off this extra glue here. So that's pretty cool, right? So that's a fun page we did and the waterfall pages. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you'll give it a thumbs up and share it and come back again. Thanks for watching.